This is the Average to Savage podcast with Paul Garino. Everyone and anyone, athletes, celebs, and much more. Today's episode is powered by CBD for Life. Whichever CBD products you need and want, CBD for Life has them, from rubs to oils. I personally use the products from CBD for Life, and I love them. Check them out at cbdforlife.us. Use the promo code SAVAGE20 for 20% off your purchase. Again, that's cbdforlife.us. What's up, everybody? I'm back for another episode of the Average Savage Podcast. Our special guest today is professional boxer Savannah Marshall. Savannah, how's it going? I'm good, thanks. I'm really well. Um, I'm, I'm honored to be on your podcast. It's my first uh, U.S. podcast. Yeah, so, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. So let's just uh, jump right into it. How how'd you get into boxing? Um, so I first started boxing when I was uh, 11 years old. And I've always been sporty. I've always liked netball and football. So the main reason why I started is because a few boys from our estate where I lived mm-hmm. used to box. And I remember um, I remember them showing me their trophies and medals what they'd won and I remember getting a little bit jealous and thinking oh I, I want to win a medal I want to win a trophy so that that initially was the first reason why I started boxing to win a little medal yeah gotcha. I know you kind of mentioned it, but was there any other sports uh, that you played growing up yeah yeah I liked I liked football mm-hmm. uh like I said netball just I was I was dead I was a dead sporty kid to be fair um just did a little bit of everything but there wasn't anything that you know I absolutely loved, like, I loved the sport of boxing. All right, this might be a funny question to you. I think I know what netball is, but what is netball? <laughs> uh, so it's a bit like basketball. Oh, okay. But the female version, let's say. <laughs> netball is like a female. Men can play, but it's more of a female sport. A female version of basketball, a bit similar. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And then going back, who inspired you to start, like, training for the Olympics? So, I first started when I was 11, Mm -hmm. and before I knew it, I was 16, and I was winning European championships, I was winning British championships, and then when I got to the age of 18, Mm -hmm. I won a silver in the Senior World Championships, and I think at that point, that was when I thought, you know what, I'm not too bad at this, I'm all right. So, at that point, I was on Team GB, the Olympic squad. Mm -hmm. And we were training at the Wards London 2012. So in between that time, I, I became world champion. I got gold in the world the world championships, which qualified me for the Olympic Games. Um, so it was all going well. And to be fair, at the time, I, I'd, I'd just turned 21. And um, to be honest, all the pressure, I was the favourite for the, the gold. And all the pressure got a bit much to me. And I kind of... I kind of bottled it a little bit, and um, I got beat in the quarterfinals, so I just missed out on a medal. Yeah, and what was your overall experience like at the Olympics, just like the atmosphere and stuff like that? In London 2012, like I said, mm. the pressure got to be too much, so I didn't enjoy it. Okay. Um, although it was a home games, I just I couldn't wait to get home, yeah. um, which really, really spoiled it for me. Um, but the whole atmosphere, training with different sports. I think I, I remember meeting, I met Usain Bold in the village. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just it was just overwhelming, really. And then in the 2016 games, did you feel like more comfortable? Yeah, so coming up for the 2016 games, I decided to, to stay for, uh, obviously, Rio. So I did another four-year cycle. Um, but then four years was a tough, tough four years for me. I got... Numerous injuries. I had in four years. I had four operations, two on my hands, one on my shoulder, one on my elbow. So it was a really rough four years. But anyway, I managed to qualify. I got another medal in the World Championships. So then I qualified for Rio, and it was kind of. I enjoyed it loads more than twenty twelve. I really soaked it up. I really enjoyed this experience um, but yet again I, I got to the quarterfinals and I just missed out on a medal so and then that was the end of my amateur career I'd, I'd mm-hmm. medals in every tournament Wales, Europeans, Commonwealth Games apart from the Olympic Games which really in essence is the only medal that's really worth anything mm-hmm. Gotcha and uh, 
I know it's always getting brought up and you're the only one to beat Clarissa Shields. Um, and I know, when do you think you'll, you'll fight her as a pro? I think that, that fight is 100% will happen next year. Okay. Yeah, 100%. It's, um, in female boxing, especially professional, there's not that many women about. Mm-hmm. So our paths will cross. I'm more than confident that they will. Are you gonna? You think you're fighting at super middleweight or middleweight? Um, so at the moment I'm at super middle. Yeah. I'm hoping to uh, get a world title shot next year, mm-hmm. and then I'd like to move down to middleweight. I don't think I could come to super well. I'd give it a try, but I don't think I'm too big for super well. So it'll have to be middleweight. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And then going, going when you turn pro, um, I know you signed with Floyd Mayweather's promotions. How did that uh, come about? So after Rio, mm-hmm. I just totally had enough. I was twenty six years old. Yeah. No, sorry, I was twenty five. I totally had enough of amateur boxing, so I was ready to retire altogether. I'd never been interested in professional boxing. Never really watched it. Um, and then I got a phone call from me with the promotions uh, expressing interest in signing me. So I just thought, wow, what an opportunity. It was to move to America, move to the States, uh, train in Las Vegas, live in Las Vegas. I thought, you know, that's, that's an opportunity that I can't, I can't give up. So that's why I, I turned over. Mm-hmm. Wait, that's crazy. So what, what were you going to do if you, if you didn't pursue professional boxing? Um, I've, I've got other interests. I, I'm, I'm quite like academic, so I, mm-hmm. I wanted to go back to, I wanted to go to university and you know things like that. Uh, me, you know, I, I've, I have other things going on in my life that you know, doesn't involve boxing. So at the time, mm-hmm. boxing brought me so much heartache. You know, it was something that I, I, I didn't really need anymore. If you understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but when I got an opportunity like that, I thought oh, I can't, can't. I can't pass that up. Gotcha. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't even know that. And then, so, um, your first fight was on the Mayweather-McGregor card, which obviously was a huge card. Uh, what, what was that like? Yeah. Uh, I think I think there was something like 16... I think there was like 16,000 people at the actual win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, wow, well, that was just crazy. But I was just so grateful for this opportunity that I just oh I it was just amazing I soaked up everything it oh it was just an amazing experience um I don't think anything I've ever top uh boxing on that bill in Las Vegas yeah 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 and what about when you came over to America did you have any like culture shock like living here um no not really to be honest that was the the biggest thing I absolutely loved living in America I trained in the Mayweather gym. Yeah. My co- I got a new coach, uh, Fareed Samad, who is now Danny Jacobs' head coach. He really looked after me. Um, and it was just the start of, in my head, the start of a new life. Mm-hmm. And then um, random random question, since it was the Mayweather-McGregor uh, fight, would you ever fight in an MMA match? I'd love to. Really? I'd love to give it a go, yeah. Um I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to give MMA a go. The only thing that put me off is that the the highest weight class for women is sixty six kilo, uh, and that's you know that's that's far far out my reach. So it's not really. Yeah. Do you know, I'm the type of person if I'm going to do something, I want to give it me all. I don't really like. I would never really do something just to be half hearted and just mm-hmm. do it for a hobby. If you know what I mean. Yeah. 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 Definitely. What about, can you give me like a rundown of what like a training camp looks like? So a training camp consists of, to be honest, because mm-hmm. I've boxed since I was 11. I've been full time since I was 17 year old. Mm-hmm. So all I've done since I was 17 is box. So really, I'm never really out of camp. Mm-hmm. I'm always ticking over. I'm always, I enjoy the training. So, so I'm not one of these fighters where the box and then have months off. I'm not like that. So for me, uh, I spa, my weekly routine would be I spa three times a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I do strength three times a week, cardio three times a week. Um, but it's mainly the sparring for me. The sparring is the most important. Mm-hmm. It's, it's important that I get three good spars in a week. Who, who do you train with out there? 
Also, I recently in the. So I recently come back to the UK. Mm -hmm. So at the minute, my my coach in the UK was Peter Fury. For anyone who doesn't know, he he was Tyson Fury's former coach, and he's his uncle. So I train with Peter now, and um, at the minute there's Huey Fury, which is Peter's son. Mm -hmm. Um, He's a top heavyweight at the minute. So and there's there's only me and Peter. uh, Sorry, me and Huey in the gym, Mm -hmm. which is a good thing for me because I get more time. More time on the pads, um, etc. But yeah, it's, it's a quiet gym and it, it works. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and I know you're you're eight and zero next, and I mean you're eight and zero now. Sorry, and yeah, um, yeah. you just had your last fight October tenth. You had a TKO in the third round, so congrats on that. And uh, like, what's, thank you. What's next for you? So I'm aiming. I'm 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 trying to push for a world title shot next, which hopefully will be in the new year. Um, so that's what I'm ho- that's what I'm pushing for. Uh, obviously, there's four belts, and the four belts are, s- are split over three different women. Uh, there's a Swedish girl who's a world champion, and two American girls. Mm-hmm. So either or either one of them, I'm more than happy to fight. More than confident. Uh, yeah, gotcha. What promotion are you with now? So at the minute, I'm with Matchroom. Okay. Um, and the show, the the fights get shown on the zone in mm-hmm. in America. Yep. But Matchroom, Matchroom, I'm with. Oh yeah, so you're definitely gonna get a big fight soon. Mm, I hope so. Matchroom, Matchroom got everybody now. Yeah, they have got a lot of fighters. And then what, what about what do you think about um, the growth of women's boxing like in the past couple of years? I think that it's grown a lot. It's mm-hmm. grown a hell of a lot. But. Um, it's still a far, far cry away from uh, male boxing. Mm-hmm. What do you think you could do to help it grow? Um, I think I've just got to pe- keep pushing again on them, them big shows, showing everyone what I'm capable of, showing everyone that women that women can, you know, box just as well as men, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And w- what advice would you give uh, up and coming boxer? Um, I'd just say just stick in, but you've got to enjoy it. It's the same as anything in life. If you don't enjoy it, there's no point in doing it because you're not going to get no satisfaction out of it. And I think that's where I've been quite lucky in the fact that I love training. There's nothing about boxing that I don't just like, apart from losing. But, um, yeah, you've just got to enjoy it. Just find something in life that you enjoy to do. And, you know, it's just a blessing. Yeah, where where do you get the motivation to do it? Um, at the minute, I think it's more. I just keep reminding myself that I've given my life to boxing. Mm-hmm. I've boxed since I was eleven eleven years old, so I don't want to leave the sport until I've got what I want, which is a world title to be a unified champion. And um, so that's what motivates me. Gotcha. Are right, you ready for some fun questions? They're going to go from average to savage. <laughs> Go on, man. Uh, what's your what's your favorite song right now? Um, I re- well, I really like Fleetwood Mac, so it would be uh, ooh, Rhiannon by the Fleet- by Fleetwood Mac. Is that a, is that a British artist? No, it's a, a mix of British and American. It's a band. Okay, all right, I'll yeah. have to check it out. It's an old one. How'd you how'd you get your nickname, the Silent Assassin? It come from when in my younger days when I was on Team GB because I was so, in, I was a really bad introvert. I was so shy and quiet, and whenever the press would come, I'd always hide or I'd never. I'd always give one word interviews, so that's where it kind of come from. Gotcha. What about who's your top five favorite boxers of all time? Um, ooh, I've got a top five. I'll give you my top three: Muhammad Ali. Okay. Uh, Mike Tyson and Sugar Ray Robinson. All right. What about if you weren't a pro boxer, what do you think you'd be doing? Um, I'm, I'm quite into, like, property in uh, mm-hmm. developments and things like that, so probably something in the in the property world, maybe. Maybe, like, an architect or something like that. Okay. So I know you said you mentioned... Uh, like, would you ever want to go back to school, like college? 
or university? Yeah, definitely. I think yeah. that's 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 one of my first goals after boxing. Gotcha. And then you you want to study something like architecture? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. That's cool. And then what do you do um, when you're not training? Like, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I like to eat. <laughs> I like to eat a lot. Uh, foods that I shouldn't eat. Um, but just I like to go. I like to go out with friends. Mm-hmm. Um. So just just socializing with friends and eating. Well, now I got to uh, now I got to ask you what's your favorite uh what's your favorite meal post fight. Post fight, um, it's just something quite at the minute. I've I've stopped eating meat, so just something carby, something like sweet potato fries, something like that. Wait, did you stop eating meat because of this Netflix show or something? Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> Everyone's been saying that. I. I heard it. This is like this is like the fourth time I heard it now in the past week. I don't even want to watch it now. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I did I did stop last year and I did yeah. it for a couple of months, and then I think a fight fell through, so I just went, "Oh, stuff it," and I just drove to McDonald's and got like a Big Mac. Gotcha. But um, I I've been off meat now for about two weeks, and the reason I've stopped is because obviously this Netflix show, but there's, they've got like a bit of a um. A bit of a study on recovery, saying that you recover quicker when you yeah. when your arteries and that aren't getting clogged up with fats from meat. So that's that's the main reason why I've given it a go. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean the only the only boxer that I see, well that I know of that was promoting like vegan stuff was um, uh, Byron Jennings, the heavyweight. All right. Or Bryant Bryant Jennings, my bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Arnie's on it now. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's uh, he doesn't eat meat. Oh man, that's hilarious. I don't know. So, uh, so you think I should watch it or no? Yeah, I think you should. I think <laughs> you'd be shocked. Uh, I mean, I remember watching a, a one uh, when I went to college, and it was something in the realms of you know just processed food and stuff. And then like I was kind of grossed out, and then I stopped like you know just for like a couple of days. But then, so I don't know how extreme this one, but it sounds pretty extreme if everyone's. If I, I heard like four people say it now. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like this day and age because the demand for meat is so big. Really, yeah. how much of it is real meat? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I know that they pump like chicken breasts full of water and <laughs> steroids. So really, what is it even pure? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I appreciate yeah. you coming on, and uh, can you let the people know where they can follow you on social media? Yeah, so I'm on. Twitter, Instagram, it's just Sav Marshall one. It's just both for each account. But if you want to follow follow me training, I'm going to Holland next week for a training camp, some good sparring. So there might be some sites on there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's my social media outlets. Do you have a do you have a date for your next fight? No, not yet. Not oh, as okay. of yet. I was trying to get out before the end of the year, but it, it looks unlikely now. So hopefully the start of the year, maybe February. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. again, I appreciate you coming on and uh, good luck in the future. I'll be keeping a track of your career. Yeah. Thank you very much, Paul. Once again, this episode was powered by CBD for life. Check them out at CBD for us and use the promo code savage 20 for 20% off your entire purchase. CBD for us. Check them out.